My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time and being with us today. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Awesome. So I'm coming in from South London. My name is Joseph James. I'm a money mindset coach and business mentor. I do, um, I've been doing coaching and mentoring for about 12 years now. I coach mainly on income streams, money mindset, and really stepping up uh, in your life and business and creating a, a life that works for you, works for your values. Um, and it's great to be here. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. What the heck money mindset strategy means? So money mindset is basically your relationship with money. So when I started out about 10, 11 years ago, I was working as a publicist. I was doing PR for celebrities and different global brands. And one of the things I noticed really quickly was you could give, um, you could give the same clients um, the same strategy, but they would get different results. And it was all about their mindset. So it's the same with business. If you give two people the same kind of uh, income strategy or, or, or business plan, their mindset's going to affect a huge part of, of that. And that comes down to how comfortable you are charging well for your time, your boundaries with clients and customers, and really giving yourself permission to, to feel comfortable charging well for your time and energy, right? Like if you, if you have a subconscious belief that it's wrong to charge for coaching or you can't earn past a certain amount, what people do is they tend to either stay stuck or they tend to sort of sabotage uh, their business in a number of ways. So what I do is give them very practical mentoring, like business steps they can take and PR advice. But also we look at really changing their mindset around owning their expertise, owning their authority, and feeling really comfortable charging well uh, for their time and their services. That is awesome. So here's my question. Yes. If I'm a nine to five person, mm -hmm. and I do want to become a business owner soon, I'm mm -hmm. getting into that realm of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. That mindset also needs to be shifted because I have an employment in the morning and let's say afternoons and the weekends, I'm going to go and spend time in building my business, my brand, my coaching business, whatever the case might be. Yeah. You know, how do I shift that mindset? Because it's like an on and off switch because in the morning I got to report to a boss. At nighttime in the afternoon, I'm reporting to myself. So what would be some of the practical ways that you recommend for individuals to take, to be able to advance in that mindset? So great question. The, the first piece of coaching I would suggest is understanding that there really isn't an on and off switch. You're always you, and you always bring your own unique set of talents and abilities to the table, whether you're in a nine to five, whether you're in a situation with your family, or you're building your own business. So the first thing I would advise is always seeing yourself as being deserving of, you know, earning a great living doing what you love, but also getting really clear on the fact that there isn't really a separation. So the same skills you use in your day-to-day -day job, they might be slightly different than you might want to do in your coaching business, but there's going to be similarities there. So I would encourage people to, like, let's say they're building up a coaching business on the side, right? start using those coaching skills in your day-to-day -day job. Start looking at really, really being excellent at everything that you're doing and really start to think of everything that you do affecting everything that you have. So one of the uh, classes I taught last night here in London was all around positioning yourself for higher fees. And some of the mindset stuff we coached on was really around the fact that how you think about yourself affects everything that you do. So if you're building a side business and you have this belief that, okay, in the day I work for someone else and in the evening I work for myself, it's going to be very hard to kind of make that a nice, smooth process. So use the skills in your day-to-day -day job that you're wanting to translate into your coaching business and also really own everything that you're doing, right? Like I think if you work in an office, sometimes it can be easy to kind of think, oh, this isn't my passion. I'll wait to be excellent when I'm doing my passion. But actually training yourself to really be great at everything that you do is going to empower your business to really step up a lot quicker. I agree with that 100%. Thank you you. do need to, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So you exactly. definitely got to, you got to excel in that. So here's my question. How long is this transition supposed to be? If, if I'm going from that and I'm working on my skills to be excellent, what time frame should I give myself without me being frustrated 
that the results are not there yet? What would be this, this, this time? I mean, when I mentor with clients privately, we normally look at around a three month mark for seeing significant changes. But I think if you're very strategic about it, you can instant, well, I say instantly, you can start to see changes, I would say within about six weeks. Um, it's important to not buy into the overnight success stuff, right? Like we know that we know as rational business people, that is not the case. Um, I don't believe in that kind of coaching and I don't believe in that kind of mentoring. But in terms of, a, of managing any feelings of frustration, I would make sure that you track deliverables. So you keep a very clear uh, Excel sheet or a track list or whatever you guys call it over there of steps you're taking, uh, offers you're making, communications you're having, that kind of thing. So you're proactively monitoring what you're doing and the results you're getting. I would also reframe any feelings of frustration as being around growth. So if you go to the gym, when you lift the heavier weights, you get sore, right? Like your muscles hurt because you're, you're stretching and you're, you're becoming stronger. So as you're building that side hustle, I'm not sure if you guys say that over there. We have a, we call we, it a we say side hustle. Uh, it's yeah, definitely a side hustle. Awesome. So we call, you know, as you're building that side hustle, I would really encourage you to like manage the narrative in your mind and, and view everything that you're doing as building on that and kind of watering those seeds. You don't expect a tree to become a tree in a week. Um, but what you do is you consistently water those seeds, knowing that what you're doing is building up into the thing that you want. During this process, how yes. important is it for individuals to have direct communication with their coach or their mentor? How often does that happen? Because I see a lot of entrepreneurs try to do it on their own and that level of communication is not there, that, mm -hmm. that getting feedback is not there. So what are some of your suggestions there? As my, I mean, I, I'm very close with my clients. So when I, when I mentor privately with a client, um, we normally start with a day together, virtually or in person, and we map out a very clear next steps plan. I personally, I like to be in daily contact with my clients. It, 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 I'm not one of those coaches that's like, see you next week, or when I'm mentoring someone, you know, talk to you in two weeks. I think it's very important to have a very close relationship to your coach, very close relationship to your mentor, and also, um, like you said about ideas, right? Like bouncing ideas off of and, and going through things. I like to always let my clients know that there are going to be times in your day you're going to want feedback. You're going to want maybe some tips, something unexpected happens, right? We've all been there. Um, and I think it's really important to have that close connection with your coach. So ideally, I would say as much as you can, depending on the agreement you have and the package you're in. Um, but at certain times, I think it's important to have daily. Uh, about three of my clients at the moment are on daily. So we do check-in calls about midday and we WhatsApp. And then we also do lots of communication on email. So they'll say stuff to me like, Joseph, can you look at this? And how would you phrase this? Or if they're talking to media or they're launching a campaign or a package or a program, I'm very, I'm very hands-on with them. And then I think at other times, maybe when things are a bit more you know, they're running a little bit more smoothly, they're more confident, we'll go to maybe once or twice a week. Got it. Here's another question that I have for you. Um, yes. I just blinked out. Give me a second. My question was this. If, if, if that entrepreneur is going through coaching, do you also suggest to them to do reading material, study on their own time, watch videos, watch, you know, do the personal development yeah. as normal. What are some of the recommendations there? So one of the first things I always suggest is to treat your mindset uh, like a non-negotiable. It's something you have to work on and maintain all the time. So when we do coaching sessions and mentoring sessions, we set very clear deliverables, what they like coaching on, what they like mentoring on, what they want to get from it. Now, I also like to encourage, I say encourage, I'm a little bit more direct, I make them do this. I make them block out times in their day, at least 30 minutes to listen to podcasts, they can listen to mine, or anyone else that they feel called to work with. Mine is called Money, Mindset and Strategy, or read a book, read a Kindle, um, listen to lectures, and like you said, watch videos, because it's kind of like, um, I'm sure you know this as well. When you're working with someone in the coaching session, it's very easy to get excited, motivated, things are great. And then they go out and life happens or 
little anxieties come up, frustrations come up. So you want to keep your mindset really strong with daily listening to podcasts, watching videos. I love to listen to podcasts when I go running. I find them really, um, they really help me to, 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 to stay focused. Um, but absolutely, I think it's very important that there's at least 30 minutes to an hour every day. I love it. I love it. My other question to you is this. Yeah. If somebody comes to you, how many minutes should, they, should that be dedicated to? You said 30 minutes. Is that for the whole day? So as long as their commitment to you for 30, 30 minutes is there, that's enough? Or can they do more? Or would you say they have to spend the rest on building their business? So, I mean, the, the 30 minutes was around what I would call like study. So listening to a podcast for mindset tips uh, or, or confidence tips or business strategies. The rest of the day, ideally, you know, it's, again, it's kind of like the gym. You get out what you put in. Uh, you know what I mean? You, 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 the, your results based, are based on how much you put in. So I think 30 minutes is a minimum. Um, in an ideal world, at least an hour of studying material. When I mentor in corporate environments, when I mentor teams and, and agencies, I often say to people, I don't want to hear that you don't have time because everyone's always on social media now, so you do have time. Um, so we give ourselves at least an hour, maybe half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening, uh, studying. And the rest of the day, I often encourage batching. So you take uh, a task like, say, preparing content or reaching out to, you know, potential clients, and you do all of those in one kind of space of time. So let's say every day at four to five, you would do talking to media or you would do reaching out to potential clients and customers. It's, it's good for your brain to get into that, um, into that flow. So you're not starting from scratch but also training yourself to make it a priority. It always frustrates me when people kind of talk about, oh, well, I did, you know, I, I was building my business. And you go, okay, so how long were you working on that for? Oh, 10 minutes. Well, it, it's not a 10-minute job. <laughs> I love it the way you phrase it. If, if I had to ask you, based on your past 12 years of coaching, Mm -hmm. To give me two common denominators, two biggest challenges that entrepreneurs go through, what, that, that keeps repeating over and over. What would those two be? In my, in my clients? In your clients. What are the biggest challenges? What is it that often happens to them and is it stopping them from their goal? What are the two common denominators that they always struggle with? The first one is, who am I to charge that when it comes to pricing? And that's one of the things I really coach people on is getting very clear on your unique set of skills and abilities that make you perfect for charging whatever, whatever is comfortable for you. And I would say the second blockage is, if I'm honest, I think it's probably fear of what other people think. You know, most people, I've coached managing directors of award-winning agencies, I've coached celebrities, I've coached personal trainers, coaches, mentors, everyone at every level, even the biggest people still go into what will other people think? What will other people say? And we, what we do is we, we really work on that and, and get very clear on, you know what? That fear is always gonna be there. So we wanna take action anyway, rather than waiting for it to go away, take action anyway and accept it as part of the process. I love it. Joseph, thank you so much for spending this time. Uh, once, the, once, once we do this video, I'm going to put a link to your profile so they could go ahead and check out your book. Awesome. But tell us what, what the book is named one more time and where can they find it? Awesome. So um, my website is josephjamesmentoring.com and my books on Amazon are just under Joseph James or Money Mentoring with Joseph James. And my podcast is uh, money mindset and strategy and you can email my assistant if you're interested in coaching at info at josephjamesmentoring.com done deal i appreciate joseph you taking this busy time you're out of your welcome. day being here hopefully looking for work to do and a lot more collaboration with you thank yes. you so much bye-bye talk to you later bye-bye